Hello everyone and welcome back to the Simpler Car Guide channel. This is part 4 of the BMW N55 engine rebuild project, where I installed the new head gasket and reinstalled the cylinder head back on the engine. In the previous videos I have taken the engine out of my BMW 335, tore it apart and found that it was, well, not rebuildable. Sometime later though I found this engine for cheap, locally and have replaced the main bearings, crankshaft, piston and installed new rod bearings so far. Now this engine is ready for the cylinder head to go back on. I chose not to do too much work on the cylinder head except for just cleaning it up and removing some of the carbon. After inspecting it I didn't see any excessive wear or anything of concern and honestly I've already used most of my budget that I had for this rebuild on bolts and seals and gaskets and all kinds of replacement parts. Clearly my engine is out of the car and it took a decent amount of work to get this far. But I'm not sure I would recommend doing this with the engine in the car, if it is at all possible. BMW also recommends taking the engine out of the car for this job and that's why you see so many valve cover videos on YouTube but I couldn't find one that shows you how to do a head gasket with the engine in the car. Anyway, this series is meant more to document my journey with this car and rebuilding the engine as a hobby mechanic and hopefully help somebody else in the future do the same, or at the very least start doing some DIY jobs at home. Also, now would be a great time to hit that like button for all of the BMW DIYers, and for the YouTube algorithm of course. Wow! Check out my video where I disassemble a BMW N55 engine and take the cylinder head off to get an idea of what it would take to get to this point. If those specifics aren't really your thing, I'm highlighting the basic steps in this video. Alright, step 1. Remove the engine from the car by removing the exhaust system, draining all of the fluids, removing the intake, radiator, all of the piping, and disconnecting it from the wire loom and transmission. Wow, that was easy. The engine's out now. Step 2. Mount the engine on the engine stand, removing the exhaust manifold with the turbo, injectors, gas lines, and anything else attached to the cylinder head. We're moving right along. In step 3, we undo all of the bolts from the valve cover, remove it and install the timing tool onto the camshaft. Now we can undo the central bolts and remove the camshaft adjusters. And hey, look at that, we are done. Now we only have 14 big bolts holding it in place and after muscling those out of the way, we can lift the cylinder head off the block. Nobody said this was an easy one, but we're finally ready to replace the head gasket. Now starts the most tedious part of the job and that's getting everything nice and clean. This doesn't look that hard on video, but it sure takes a while to do. I'm mostly just removing the carbon buildup as much as I can just to help the engine breathe a little bit better and have a slightly better oil flow. Removing remnants of the old gaskets is the most important step, otherwise your new expensive gasket will not make a very good seal and you'll have oil leaks after all of this hard work. I didn't use any metal tools while doing this as it's very easy to damage the mating surface, but I did use a brass spinning wheel on the valves to get rid of all of that build up carbon. The brass tool is approved for aluminum use, so I had no concerns using it on hardened valves. Having this great access to the pistons, I gave them a quick clean as well. much better. Now that all of the parts are ready, it's a good idea to wipe everything down and make sure there is no oil and dirt in the blind holes or anywhere the gasket will touch. Then it's time to actually install the gasket. I decided to go with the L-Ring head gasket as they're the OEM for BMW and I've used their products before. It simply goes on top of the block making sure all of the holes line up and the head can go on top. It's heavy and you should really have a buddy help you out. But I work on this stuff at night and I like being in the way of the camera, so here we are. Once everything looks good and it's lined up, it's time to grab a torque wrench and the angle gauge 
and torque the head bolt to spec. Just like with everything else, we're going to be installing new cylinder head bolts. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them. And these were expensive too. But we have the thicker ones that go in the middle, so it's 1 through 10. And then we have, I think it's 4 of them that go more on the sides. Let's get them properly installed, torqued, and do the correct torque angle. One thing that I wanted to mention that's very important is to make sure you don't forget the washers. As you can see, they kind of sit in there, so, and hard to notice. This is uh, a space where there is no washer, and there is a washer in there. So if you accidentally leave the old one in, right, and then you put another one on top, or you don't put one at all and just put your head bolts in without a washer, your torques are not going to be correct. So very important, make sure you have either new or you're going to be reusing the washers, make sure they're all in. Very important. For the smaller head bolts over there, you need those as well. I actually got it. I didn't really know if it was gonna work, but that's pretty sweet. You'll need a special long torque spit set to reach the bolts and set correct torque values. I got mine on Amazon, and if you're interested, check out the link below. Those work great. There are three types of bolts here. We have the M11 and the M9 bolts, those are the ones that go in the middle and are torqued to 30 newton meters, then 90 degree angle of rotation, and another 180 degree on second round. The third type are the M9 short bolts that go on the side where the time chaining goes, and they're torqued to 22 newton meters. As always, I'm going to use my torque wrench. This one is set to 30 newton meters or slightly over 22 pound feet of torque. Following this diagram. I don't think I have to explain how important it is to do this to spec. Just imagine the pressure between the block and the cylinder head when the engine is running. Now that I have torqued all of the cylinder head bolts to 30 newton meters, I'm going to do 90 degrees on every single one of them, starting one, two. I just did one and two, so I'm doing three, four, five. No, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, basically by going to this diagram. I've showed it to you before. So I'm gonna set my dial to zero. Put a little bit of tension. Okay, zero. Lock it in place. And we're gonna do 90 degrees. I'm gonna hold the stem so it doesn't move. And 90, right there. 90, we stop we go to number four, which is gonna be right here. Once we do all of them, we're gonna do another 180. That's gonna need, we're gonna need some strength for that one, so I'm probably gonna be using like a breaker bar, but should be doable. Now that I have done 90 degree torque on all of the bolts, I'm gonna do 180. And man, this one is <laughs> not easy. So let's, let's give it a try. Set to zero. All right. Okay, 140. 180. So that's a good amount of torque, guys. Just 12 other ones to go. And the last thing to do to finish the job is to put back the stopper bolt for the eccentric shaft and the oil spraying nozzle that we removed to get to the bolts. 
And that's all for part 4 of the BMW N55 engine rebuild project. In the next video I will be installing the oil pump, the timing chain guides with the timing chain and timing the engine. If you'd like to see that, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.